All right, so in this problem, I have x to the power of x is equal to x to the power of 2. So to solve this, I'm going to divide both sides by x to the power of 2. So then these two cancel out, and I have 1 is equal to x to the power of x over x to the power of 2. Now if I have something from a to the power of m over a to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m minus n. So x to the power of x over x to the power of 2, this is going to equal x to the power of x minus 2. Now if I take the ln of both sides, I get ln of 1 is equal to ln of x to the power of x minus 2. Now if I have something in the form ln a to the power of b, I can move this exponent b to the front, so it's going to equal b times ln a. Now I, have, I can move x minus 2 to the front, so now I have ln 1 is equal to x minus 2 times ln of x. And ln of 1 is equal to 0, so I have 0 is equal to x minus 2 times ln x. So now this actually gives me two equations. I have x minus 2 is equal to 0, and I have ln of x is equal to 0. So for x minus 2 equals 0, this is pretty simple. All we have to do is add 2 on both sides. And, sorry, we get that x is equal to 2. And for ln x equals 0, well, ln of 1 is equal to 0, so x is equal to 1. So my two solutions are x equals 2 and x equals 1. All right, so in this problem, I have 3 to the power of x to the power of 3 over 9 to the power of x is equal to 81. So I'm going to first rewrite 9 to the power of x as 3 squared to the power of x. And we got 81 as 3 to the power of 4. Now, this is the same thing as 3 to the power of x to the power of 3 minus 2x is equal to 3 to the power of 4. Because 3 to the power of 2 to the power of x, that's going to equal 3 to the power of 2x. And now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m is equal to a to the power of n, then this means that m is equal to n. So in this case, x to the power of 3 minus 2x is equal to 4 meaning x to the power of 3 minus 2x minus 4 is equal to 0. So now to solve this, we actually have to find one solution of x before, so we can use that solution to find the other solutions of x. And we actually have to just keep on plugging in numbers until we find a solution. So if you actually plug in 2, you get that x equals, or sorry, that the solution equals 0. So x equals 2 is one solution of x. And now using the solution, we can find the rest of the solutions by doing long division. x minus 2 equals 0 is a solution, so meaning we have to divide this by our original equation. So we have x, x to the power of 3 minus 2x minus 4 divided by x minus 2. And if you do this, you end up getting x minus 2 times x squared plus 2x plus 2 is equal to 0. Now this gives me two equations. I have x minus 2 is equal to 0, and I have x squared plus 2x plus 2 is equal to 0. So for x minus 2 equals 0, x is obviously equal to 2. And for x squared plus 2x plus 2 equals 0, I can use the quadratic formula. So I get x is equal to negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 2 squared, which is 4, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 2, all over 2a. This is equal to negative 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 4 over 2, which is equal to negative 2 plus or minus 2i over 2, which is equal to negative 1 plus or minus i.
So these are my three solutions to this problem. All right, so in this problem, I have x to the power of four is equal to 16. So I'm gonna first start by subtracting 16 on both sides. So then these two cancel out and I'm left with x to the power of four minus 16 is equal to zero. Now x to the power of four, I'm gonna rewrite as x to the power of two times two. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m times n, this is equal to a to the power of m to the power of n. So x to the power of two times two, I can rewrite that as x to the power of two to the power of two minus 16, I'm gonna rewrite as four to the power of two, this is equal to zero. Now, if I have something in the form a squared minus b squared, this is equal to a plus b times a minus b. So in this case, a is x squared and b is four. So now I have x squared plus four times x squared minus four is equal to zero. Now this is gonna give me two equations. I have x squared plus four is equal to zero and I have x squared minus four is equal to zero. So x squared plus four equals zero I can actually subtract four on both sides and I have x squared minus four, or sorry, x squared is equal to negative four. Now for x squared minus four equals zero, I can add four on both sides and I get x squared is equal to positive four. Now for x squared equals positive four, this is pretty simple. We just take the square root on both sides square root of x squared is x, and the square root of four, that's gonna equal positive or negative two. Now for x squared is equal to negative four, I'm gonna start by doing the same thing. I have the square root of x squared is equal to the square root of negative four. However, the square root of negative four, I'm gonna rewrite that as the square root of four times the square root of negative one. And if you guys already didn't know, the square root of negative one is equal to the imaginary number i. So I have this square root of four times i. The square root of x squared is x, and the square root of four is positive or negative two. So I have x is equal to positive negative two i, and x is equal to a positive or negative two.